Velocity impact fusion is a new approach to fusion. Hydrogen ions accelerated to a target impact and collide with fusion reactive velocities. Brookhaven National Laboratory in New York first described and published this process in physical review letters. They used an ionizer followed by a linear particle accelerator where ionized heavy water ice crystals impacted a target with fusion reactive velocities. Lawrence Livermore Laboratory in Berkeley further developed the process to a concentric DC particle accelerator and received a patent proving velocity impact fusion. Fusion reactive gases are ionized by radial frequency electric fields in a peripheral ionization chamber. A perforated ground plane plate permits positive ions to enter the central particle accelerator as their freed electrons are captured by this ground plane. A central impact target is highly negatively charged with relation to the ground plane. The electric field is of such magnitude and polarity as to accelerate the positive ions to the target with fusion reactive velocities. At the same time, I developed a concentric AC particle accelerator and received the next fusion patent. We introduced the Deleuze fusion reactor and compare it with the Lawrence Livermore reactor. The Lawrence Livermore reactor is a concentric DC particle accelerator. The Deleuze fusion reactor is a concentric AC particle accelerator. With DC operation, drive power is dissipated across the resistive load. With AC operation, drive power is placed across the capacitive load and power is not dissipated. This provides greater power gain and allows sustained continuous operation. AC and DC differ in time domain behavior. Scientific and engineering convention represent cyclic time as a counter-rotating vector on a unit circle. Time is in degrees of rotation. On an XY plot, time progresses to the right. Zero amplitude is along the x-axis with positive above and negative below. Instantaneous amplitude is the distance above or below this x-axis. One vector rotation represents a single, complete repetitive sequence. Constant DC does not change in amplitude or polarity. AC is a repetitive cyclic phenomenon, often a sine wave. Positive amplitude peaks at 90 degrees. Negative amplitude peaks at 270 degrees. Amplitude is zero at zero, 180, and 360 degrees. This cycle can repeat indefinitely. The phase one Deleuze fusion reactor has a physical target. A spherical version has a centered spherical target concentrically enclosed by a vacuum tight non-conductive envelope as shown in blue. A spherical, conductive ground plane shown in black, separated by an insulating layer, encloses this envelope. A high voltage AC power supply is connected between the target and ground plane, shown as a circle with an enclosed vector. Application of AC potential produces an enclosed alternating electric field, shown as yellow arrows. Arrowheads point in the direction a positive ion moves within this field. Observe the following. While the power supply vector is above the horizontal, the target is green and negatively charged. Maximum field intensity is reached when this vector is straight up at 90 degrees. Positive ions will be accelerated centrally to the target. While the power supply vector is below the horizontal, the target is red and positively charged. Maximum field intensity is reached when this vector is straight down at 270 degrees positive ions will be accelerated outward to the reactor envelope. Starting with the AC vector at zero degrees, we progress stepwise through a complete sequence. As the AC rotates from zero, the initial small electric field results in polarization. Polar hydrogen atoms align along radial axis from the central target with their electronegative poles pointing outward towards the ground plane. Ionization occurs as the increasing electric field progressively increases the proton-electron bond length till it breaks. With the proton having 1800 times the mass of the electron, electrons accelerate 1800 times faster, quickly reaching the reactor envelope. On capture, they define a conductor which forms the inner plates of a capacitive voltage divider. 
Applied voltage concentrates across this inner smaller capacitor. With 200,000 volts applied, 150,000 volts will concentrate centrally forming the acceleration potential. At this point in the time domain, conditions within our reactor are exactly the same as within the Lawrence Livermore reactor. Enclosed positive ions are bound peripherally with a positive charge and centrally with a negative charge. Ions accelerate to the target with fusion reactive velocities in both cases. After fusion, ions are now helium. The power supply reverses polarity and the direction of the electric field. Electrons of the conductive layer accelerate centrally, eliminating the voltage divider. Positive ions accelerate outward, recombining with electrons forming neutral helium gas. Helium waste gas represented by gray smoke is exhausted. Pink gas representing randomly oriented and placed dipole hydrogen atoms as fuel is introduced. The AC finishes its cycle, operation has come a complete circle, and the process is ready to repeat. This reactor drives fusion with electromotive force, minimizing parasitic beam losses experienced with DC acceleration. Energy is prioritized in moving particles, appearing as power supply currents resulting from the reactor deviating from that of a perfect capacitance. The sun drives fusion with gravitational force as ours uses electromotive force. Like the sun, our reactor efficiently separates issues of force from those of power. This will be the key to its success. This provides for high power gain. Repetitive cycling provides sustained operation with a power impulse during each cycle. Radiations from the reaction pass to surrounding shielding and absorbing structures to be transformed to heat to do work. We are developing a new absorber shield which will transform such radiations directly to DC electricity. This allows placing small reactors in cars for environmentally friendly, zero emissions transportation. We now compare the operation cycle of our fusion reactor with that of a two-stroke internal combustion engine. Starting with upward piston motion, air or an air-fuel mixture is compressed. Combustion begins at the top of piston travel by fuel injection or spark ignition. Expanding burning gases push the piston down, producing power. Combustion products are exhausted from the chamber. Fresh air or a fresh air-fuel mixture is then introduced called intake. Our reactor similarly repeats a cyclic sequence. Starting with the AC vector at zero, the reactor goes through polarization, ionization, and inward particle acceleration. With the AC vector approximating 180 degrees, fusion reactions due to particle collisions occur. Power is released from the reactor rapidly as radiations transmitted to surrounding absorbing structures where they are transformed to heat to do work. Ions and electrons now move in opposite directions, recombining to neutral helium gas and are extracted. New fuel, hydrogen gas, is introduced as intake. This cycle is controlled by the electrical rotation of the applied electromotive force, creating a reciprocating electric field within the reactor. Our reactor will power a pressurized water reactor power plant. A conventional nuclear plant has a fission reactor within a reactor vessel indicated by its control rods. In a fusion power plant, our fusion reactor replaces the fission reactor shown as a flashing sphere within a pressurized water reactor vessel. All remaining processes are unchanged. High pressure water circulates around the reactor absorbing emitted radiations, transforming them to heat. This heated water now circulates through a steam generator producing steam to power a turbo generator. Cooling water circulates through a condenser precipitating spent steam for reuse. Generated electricity is distributed to customers. For the entire year of 2010, the U.S. produced about 3,886 million megawatt hours of electricity. This would require burning 1,943 million tons of coal or 9,715 million barrels of oil. Our fusion reactors allow replacing all of this fuel with only 195,000 gallons of water that amount in 10 16-foot by 32-foot backyard swimming pools. 
All this electricity could be produced with no carbon dioxide emissions or dangerous radioactive wastes. We have the design of an innovative radiation to DC electricity transformer shown enclosing a compressed toroidal reactor running aneutronic fusion reactions. All radiations transform directly to DC electricity and charge a battery. A 2 by 2.5 by 3.5 foot box produces 80 kilowatts, 106 horsepower of electricity. With an equalization battery, this will operate a 300 horsepower motor and power all cars and light trucks. A 3 foot cube produces 300 kilowatts, sufficient power for a city bus or semi truck. A power controller and electronics operates the motor, all of their functions of the car, and controls the reactor. This onboard primary energy source will permit a car to go 35 million miles nonstop on the energy from a gallon of water. A city bus or semi truck will go about 8 million miles on the same amount of fuel. Truly zero emissions. All reactor wastes are stored in an exhaust tank for later processing and reuse. We have the design of an innovative fusion powered jet engine. This engine uses two helically intercoiled reactors. Each reactor, complete with its own fuel, exhaust, control system, and power supply, is independently capable of operating this engine at full power. This dual nature provides the extreme reliability needed for aircraft. Cold air is compressed by a compressor fan and directed through and around the intercoiled reactors and radiation absorbers. The energy of fusion heats this air which is ejected as jet thrust via the exhaust nozzle. Nothing is added to the air but heat energy. The energy differential between inlet and outlet air streams provides thrust by the jet principle. All reactor wastes are stored in an exhaust tank for later processing and reuse. There are no CO2 or other waste emissions. This provides truly zero emissions air travel. This onboard fusion primary energy source will permit an airliner to travel 250,000 miles nonstop on the energy from one gallon of water, approximately 10 times around the world at the equator. Thank you for watching our presentation. Please visit our website at fusionenergysolutions.net.